Well, as you mentioned, we have, um, my name is Daryl Atwater. I'm the Global Vice President of Huawei Technologies, uh, Voss Integrated Solution Sales, which admittedly is, is a mouthful. But what that means is I have the pleasure of traveling around the world and talking to operators and listening to what their challenges are as they try to evolve their vast ser Voss service businesses. And so I, I bring some of those learnings to you here today and want to share some of those key messages, as well as, as Clement mentioned, kind of the strategy about how to look at Voss in the future as uh, technology continues to, to create innovations for us. Okay, so with this, let's just jump right in. Um, I'm gonna cover this topic in, in three key areas. Uh, the first being uh, challenges operators are encountering as they've been evolving their traditional businesses into the Voss space. Then um, what we're also seeing is a good trend in terms of the, the initial reaction to competition from the OTT players into more of a competi uh, cooperative arrangement. We'll talk briefly about that. And then we'll move into the core topic, which is Voss transformation and the strategy that we mentioned. Okay. So this is a, a depiction of, of something I think fairly represents what's going around in, on the globe, um, certainly at different levels and degrees depending on the marketplace. But um, from the traditional revenue sources for an operator, you know, we've seen one after another uh, degrade either because of you know, competition and um, just the need to, to, to provide additional things to our consumers of value. So the handset certainly, initially the um, original equipment manufacturers and the operators came together and there was a mutually beneficial agreement. Nowadays we're seeing more and more, of course, those are kind of a loss leader and um, not really generating much revenue for the, for the operator. More of an enticement either for a contract or just to be a, consumer, a customer. The, uh, in terms of the VAS space, we, we saw very easily that the, a lot of players got in early and they started, as of course Apple and some of these other large players created stores they have hundreds of thousands of available options and solutions for consumers. And um, quite honestly, you know, they got out in front. And so they certainly are controlling certain things because of that. Um, various operators in various markets have tried to do their own um, marketplaces and have various degrees of success with that. And then ultimately, from just an individual offering perspective, uh, that there are certainly challenges from an operator creating offerings versus some of these OTT players, and we'll talk about those in the next section. So as the right hand mentions, you know, some of the, the high-level statistics that we're seeing that, that depict this trend is that 20% of smartphone users are now, in fact, using voice over the Internet. And while that's not as in a 100% replacement on an individual user perspective, uh, it certainly is showing that this trend is, is underway. And of course, 45% are now using some sort of over-the-top messaging service. And so we're seeing the degree, degrade in both voice and SMS revenue you know, in, in markets around the world. Okay, so as, as the operators you know, were confronted with the, the lower barriers of entry into the offerings in their business space, um, of course, initial reactions were, okay, a little bit defensive, and, and we have to compete with these folks. These are competitors of ours. And so when they said, well, you know, we need to ramp up some of these offerings, we need to create some things, become innovative, become nimble and agile, they quickly realized there was some challenges to doing that, okay? The first of which was from an architectural standpoint, in order to provide more Voss services, they realized that they had built over time very siloed architectures for, for their Voss services. Um, that made, created a number of problems just from a, a cost to maintain on an ongoing basis from a total cost of ownership perspective, but also from um, evolving to the latest platforms and technologies and um, allowing further new development to take place. From a complex integration perspective here, what we're referring to is you know, the ability to work perhaps in a cooperatively arrangement with over the top players, opening up capabilities within their networks and creating revenue from that relationship. And so, again, because of their uh, traditional infrastructures, those were challenges for them. Lack of resources was also a challenge as they moved into the Voss space and deciding what areas to play in. They either, you know, from an innovative perspective in-house that was challenging, or from a perspective of, you know, simply doing the formalities of the relationships of working with the four, third parties. So you can imagine doing that with one third party, but when you actually need to multiply that perhaps by tens or hundreds, um, that can be, be very resource intensive work. So all of these, you know, initially, or all of these led to things like slow time to market for offerings they were creating and evolving, as well as losing their position as the OTT continued to kind of get ahead of them in the latest offerings. Um, and, and of course, they were continuing to see low revenue um, results from, from what Voss areas they did, did move into. Okay. 
So the new paradigm, now this is where the story starts to shift a little bit, and we've seen this in the last six months to a year, um, which is a good thing, and that is that um, no longer are operators and OTH players simply looking at each other as competitors. They're starting to realize that this Voss arena is very complex, everybody has a role to play in it, and by working together, actually, everybody can win, including the end user from a customer experience perspective, but also from the nimbleness that it allows them to together to move into new areas and, and new, new vertical industries um, as, as technology evolves. So I won't, you know, for the sake of time, I won't read through each one of these, but suffice it to say there's things like I mentioned sometimes from a resource perspective or nimbleness or lack of deregulation, the OTT players have a little bit of advantage. From a maturity and relationship with a customer and being known in the marketplace, the operator certainly has an advantage in that perspective. And so when they, when they bring some of these, um, you know, joint features together, they're able to create uh, a very valuable and strong relationship. And, and like I said, everybody benefits. So a recent study that Analysis Mason did, you know, did show that this trend is in fact occurring and that the operators are, are changing their perspective on things and seeing that 70% are now willing to, you know, consider a more open relationship with OTT players and likewise OTT players and in fact device man uh, manufacturers are willing to open up and expose some of their core assets as well. So this is, this is a good trend for everyone. Okay, so with the time remaining now, we're going to get into the core topic, which is Voss transformation. And as, as we kind of let off with, this is, I uh, want everybody to think about this as a definition for Voss transformation, because there is some confusion out there. And so for the context of today's discussion, I want you to think about Voss transformation as an initiative or a program, comprehensive in nature, across the business and IT departments, so that, in fact, there's not only just the vision, but there's also the cohesiveness that you need to, to successfully uh, execute that Voss strategy, okay? So in, in terms of a simple definition, it's the alignment of people, processes, software, technology, partners, and business environmental factors all brought together in your strategy and to align to ensure the greatest success for everyone revenue-wise. So ACE is an acronym that is, is, helps us kind of get our arms around Voss transformation as a subject or as a, as a program initiative that we would encourage operators to undertake in-house. And thinking of it more of as a journey, something that will occur in phases. It's not unlike the, um, you know, what I'll call the one customer view or CRM uh, initiatives that we're doing in the late 90s and in the 2000s where the goals of operators were to try to plug those servicing holes and have true visibility of their customer from you know first point of contact all the way through to the end of the relationship. It gave them insights into marketing and all kinds of other operational efficiencies. So it was bringing, again, it was bringing systems together, it was getting rid of redundancy, it was getting better access to consolidated data. With, with Voss transformation, you're very much kind of in that same vein. You're looking for a strategy to look holistically, as I said, across business on IT. So the ACE stands for um, value chain aggregation is on the left-hand side here. What we're talking about there is identifying those, those services, whether it be contact, uh, excuse me, content or services that you want to offer to your uh, customers and, and identifying those and then defining how is it that you are going to work in a relationship fashion with those third parties. Are you going to try to do that in-house with the resources that you have? Do you have efficient and lean um, and short time to market, if you will, processes that for everything from identifying the parties that you want to work with to assessing them to monitoring their ongoing performance for you and your customers as, and, and going through the contract and onboarding process, okay? So there's a number of decisions operators have there in terms of doing things in-house or perhaps you know, looking to a partner to specialize with some of that and outsource or manage service some of these things. From a platform consolidation perspective, um, here we're really talking about uh, technologies and solutions that help expose the operator's network to third parties so that perhaps they can um, look at strategies like using APIs to derive revenue uh, models for third parties, access to their capabilities of their network horizontal platforms like service delivery platforms that allow you know exposure of those capabilities more easily managing the subscriber information linking into the other provisioning systems and the charging and billing systems for the operator and uh, giving a point where the third party can more easily interact with and learn about how they need to uh, integrate with the operator so um, also within this space is technologies like Voss Cloud. So if you have typically, we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in a moment, 
But a lot of times, as I said, you had inherent architectures that were very siloed in nature when it came to some of the core Voss, traditional Voss services. And so as those migrate to new technologies such as the cloud, you're able to you know, reduce licensing costs and other, other advantages, and we'll talk about that in a minute more detail. Uh, operational excellence. Now this is, again, a key component because it's not only the business vision, but it's uh, you know, in terms of product strategy, go to market, pricing, all these kinds of things, but it's also how are you gonna do that and who's gonna do that? You know, is the operator going to provide over oversight to an, you know, an entity that perhaps does it in a managed service relationship? Are they going to do it in-house? Um, are they going to have contractual arrangements to make sure that performance is at an acceptable level? Okay. So we'll talk about each of these three areas um, quite quickly here. So traditionally what we saw, you know, a lot of operators as, as the evolution of things occurred, they went out and they, they saw the trend, they wanted new revenue sources, so they went out and tried to identify, uh, which is represented by the small little boxes there in the middle, uh, third parties, whether it be content or services, um, that perhaps their customers would take hold of and, and consume and, and generate revenue from that. Um, of course, as I've mentioned, a number of the challenges already in doing that, just in terms of the pure volume that's necessary and, and the time it takes, uh, as well as perhaps the in-house expertise that may not be present to do that. So going down the right side quickly, it's, you know, oftentimes what resulted was few partners, um, difficult process uh, for partner acquisition, so sometimes partners didn't want to work with the operators. Um, they were fearful that they were ever going to get settled up with and get paid. Um, not balanced in terms of the types of offerings, so sometimes you had domestic offerings and international offerings being very lopsided, and that's still you know, going on today, where maybe the, there's plenty of local offerings, but perhaps the consumers are looking broader picture and wanting some of what they see out there around the world. So looking for ways to balance that. And then the innovation and the time to market. Um, you know, that, that's a key thing here is, is how, how can an operator possibly, you know, um, keep on the leading edge of the right offerings and these types of things. So, so one of the options that an operator can have to overcome this challenge is they, is they define their Voss strategy and how they're going to orchestrate it. Um, value chain aggregation does look at simplifying this process so organizations can come in and play a value, uh, value service aggregator role. And that allows, and where what their role is, is they will go out um, and, and essentially form relationships with these third parties, do all the partner sourcing, the qualification, the management, and so on, taking that uh, off the shoulders of the operator, allowing them to, to have one point of settlement with a central party and essentially greatly diversify and speed the time to market for new offerings. So they're more, more looking at a menu of, of what they could add as opposed to you know, spending time in a lot of logistical red tape that slows down time to market. Okay, um, <clears throat> we talked about platform consolidation. On the left-hand side, you know, that, this is a typical representation. Um, it, it essentially is showing that in, in many operators, what we've witnessed around the world is that each of the traditional Voss services were very siloed architecture, perhaps by different vendors, uh, different service level agreements, and these sort of things. So there becomes a point in time where you have to look at the useful life of things and decide when it's time to progress and move to uh, you know, perhaps a new solution. But as a stepping stone, many of them are looking at, like I said, service delivery platforms which expose and help to align the communication in a more simple manner, um, giving a, a greater flexibility to work with them. Um, other technologies are the cloud, and all these are meant to reduce total cost of ownership, to drive more revenue, to allow the operator to get to market more quickly with new services and offerings for their consumer. And again, just I'll, because I've, I've got one more area to cover, but I'll just mention it here, is the key thing to remember is that I'm not suggesting that all this be done at one time, right? I'm giving you a lot of information because we've got a very short period of time, and Voss transformation and Voss services in general is a very huge topic. But I want to make sure I'm emphasizing certain key messages, which are, in this case, you know, transformation is a journey. It's things that you need to allow time for, and... Um, you know, certainly in terms of investments in platforms and these kind of solutions and things, they need to be done at the right time in conjunction with the other decisions that your overall strategy suggests uh, they should be done in. Okay. So now operational excellence, and this is, as you see on the left, you know, there's, there's layers to this uh, topic. So you have the business operations, the service management, and the resource management. Um, in, the, in the business level, again, you're talking about what offerings do you want to go out there with and, and how is it that you're going to you know, price them, how you're going to categorize them, what is, your, what, what is the manner in which you're going to develop your Voss strategy, and then to, to the extent of the tip, typical business uh, management practices, how are you going to manage those in-house, do you need to redefine business processes, thin them down so that time to market is squeezed to the absolute shortest that it can be. Okay. 
Um, and again, of course, it, it falls into partner acquisition, falls into this arena too. How are you going to source your, your partners and your content and services? Service management is now looking at, okay, great, we've got the first, that first phase is underway. We've developed our relationships. We've got access to content and services. You know, what do we, what is, how is it that we're going to make sure that it's performing up to our standards? And when we get complaints, if we get them from customers, you know, how can we either validate them or invalidate them or tweak things? And so you need a layer of service management, which gives you visibility. Again, here I'm back into the service, uh, excuse me, the solution arena, because that's, that's what gives you the visibility and, and the insights into how, how your user experience are likely to be occurring. And so you need, you know, an operator needs that kind of infrastructure in place to provide some end-to-end -end visibility and, and be able to make adjustments as appropriate. And the Voss Cloud and these kind of strategies really help uh, operators do that quickly and efficiently because of the elasticity of, of virtualization. Um, and finally, in resource management, um, you know, this is already, you know, very well known to operators, but it just can't be left unsaid. So you have the network and everything to keep an eye on is, is obviously the, the pipe that everything is flowing through and needs to be operating efficiently and not affecting experience in any negative ways. So looking at that whole picture, there's obviously this is just one representation of it at a pretty high level for today's discussion, but the intention is to show the breadth and the areas of the things that need to be considered when you're looking from point of source to point of enjoyment, if you will, and, and everything in between. Um, so, now vast transformation, just in summary, okay, and I, I intentionally went as quickly as I could. Voss transformation, the value chain aggregation, platform consolidation, and operational excellence. These are three you know, key component areas that should be considered in any transformation initiative. And as I've encouraged, it should be done holistically. Um, key learnings from the 90s and the 2000s, certainly, and probably before that, were you know, looking at doing it across business and IT to make sure all the leadership and, and everybody involved is aligned in the strategy and the priorities and how it will be executed making individual investments in a solution without a monetization strategy or simply chasing the latest hot, you know, killer app, if you will, you know, can lead to a lot of disappointment when it comes to revenue. Um, so, so these things need to be done holistically. And, and as that mentions on the right, one of the things that, um, you know, operators that are part of a group can take advantage of is certainly doing a VOS strategy across the operating group, utilizing this same sort of uh, key components for their for framework for defining that, that uh, initiative and undertaking that. And we're seeing that in various parts of the world at the group level. Um, certainly isn't easy, um, but they are, they are wanting to do that because for obvious synergistic reasons for cost. If you can buy once and source you know, and, and deliver to many, that's obviously the, the formula that makes sense. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, that can kind of concludes uh, Voss Transformation for today. <laughs>